during my time on YouTube, I've been asked to talk about many a topic, topics, various things. <laughs> and one of the things I've been asked to talk about is the differences between tracing, copying, and references, when to do what, what's okay to do. So hopefully I will answer all of those questions and maybe more in this video, hopefully. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. This is a topic that I wanted to talk about for a while now, back when I asked you guys for topic recommendations forever ago. It feels like on Instagram, this was one that stood out to me. Mostly because every artist ever will tell you to use reference pictures, but then I feel like a lot of people who aren't artists tend to just be less impressed, I guess, when you say you've used a reference picture, or they'll think that you're a quote-unquote better artist if you don't use reference pictures. And then I also want to talk about tracing and copying, because I have some thoughts about that too, so let's hopefully- let's- let's do it. I don't know how to transition smoothly into the actual video, so I'm just- I'm just gonna dive in. <laughs> so I guess I'll talk about what each thing is first. I'm assuming you know tracing. What- you literally draw over a drawing directly or a picture directly. That's, I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. I think people can get a little confused between like copying and referencing though because I think a lot of people can see using references as copying but here, here's the big difference. Copying is where you aren't tracing it but you are looking at it directly and trying to draw it as closely as you can to the original. And one thing I see a lot with like younger artists is where they can copy something but then like color it differently or copy certain aspects of it but like you can tell that it's copied because it doesn't really match with the rest of it. But copying is basically if you just try and replicate replicate Oh my god. <laughs> it's when you try and replicate something as closely to the original as you can and then referencing is where you have pictures to look at for reference, which is why it's called referencing, but you aren't copying it exactly. So for the two pictures that I'm drawing in this video, the first one I've loosely referenced several different images so there isn't really one image that's this this how do i words <laughs> there wasn't one picture i was specifically looking at i was just looking at various images of muscles and then just drawing a thing based off of those different images and then the second one i would look at one image specifically so i would say that the second image is a little more copied than the first one but yeah <laughs> that that's what's what what is recommended i'll start off by talking about tracing because i feel like i have the least to say about tracing and i don't want to say don't ever trace but i would highly recommend not for the most part so the reason i say don't ever not trace <laughs> is because a lot of artists that you look up to on the internet such as myself and probably many others when we were younger we learn by tracing i think it really helps to develop muscle memory and to some extent can help you study another artist's style, but I, th I think that out of all of these three, tracing has the least benefits, but it does have benefits, and like I said, a lot of young artists learn that way. But, big, big, big but, not, a okay. If you do trace artwork, either keep it to yourself and don't share online, but then always 100% give credit if you do share it with other people. Don't trace something and then claim that you made it. Say, hey, I traced this from this person because I want to learn, etc, etc. Even still, like, don't, don't, I wouldn't recommend it a lot. If you're an experienced artist, don't trace, just, just don't. There's no reason for you to. If you are a young artist, there are some benefits to tracing, but like I said, it's not like it, it's the least helpful of all of these, so I wouldn't recommend it a whole lot just to like help you get your foot in the door. But then when you do trace, don't ever ever say that it's yours because it's not. Okay, end of tracing thought. Next up, copying. I feel like the way that people talk about copying on the internet is that it's this very horrible thing that an artist can do. I, I, my, my thoughts on that is yes and no. <laughs> I think it'd be really shitty to copy somebody else's work and then claim it as your own. But similar to tracing, I think it's a great way for younger artists or beginner artists to learn. And again, a lot of artists such as myself and others, I won't speak for anybody else, but I know other artists 
when they were younger, they would copy, and again, it would help them learn to draw. So, another thing I'll recommend for younger artists, but again, don't ever claim that it's yours. All that stuff. Basically everything for tracing. <laughs> another benefit to like copying an artwork is that it can help you learn to put what you see onto paper because you aren't tracing over it exactly, but you're like, you're trying to replicate it, which is something similar to like life drawing, I guess. Obviously they're two different things, but it's, it's kind of a similar skill, I, I, I guess. <laughs> And if you're trying to recreate another artist's piece, a very common tip that I see online for trying to find your own art style is to like take aspects from a different art style that you like and incorporate it into your own. And then after you do that, it's kind of like Frankensteining a bunch of art styles until you get something more you. I guess. But copying can be a way to help you find what you like about somebody's art style or find what you like to draw. So if you're replicating another artist's work, it might help you see that you really like the way that they draw hair or you really like their line quality or whatever it may be. And then that way you can incorporate it into your own style. But just like with tracing, always, always, always give credit. Don't copy something and then say that it's yours. And also, if you can, if you're trying to recreate another artist's work and you intend on posting it on social media, or even if you're not intending on posting it on social media, you should always ask that artist first. That's something that I've gotten questions about a lot, and so I'm just going to put this out here now. As long as you give me credit, I don't care if you reference my work, because it's something that I've done a lot growing up to be able to learn and to be able to find my own style and to be able to develop new techniques. So if you want to recreate some of my work for the sake of learning, or even if it's just partially recreating it, go ahead, you don't need to ask me, just give me credit. That's, that's cool. That's not something that is true for every artist, and each artist has their own opinion on it. Some artists might not want you to for their own personal reasons, so just ask that artist, make sure they're cool with it, don't claim it's yours, awesome. <laughs> And now, references, which is probably going to be the big chunk of this video. Absolutely, 100%, I recommend using references. If you followed me on my channel for a long time, I am a very big advocate for using references, much like any artists. Pretty much online, every artist will tell you to use references. It's a very, they're a very good thing. There are artists that you look up to that still use references, including professionals that are like in the industry. A very good piece of advice that I heard but I cannot remember where I heard it from. Somewhere, it was somewhere online, so I'm sorry to whoever that person was. <laughs> but it was draw what you see, not what you know. You might think you know what something looks like, but then when you actually go and draw it, there's a lot of details that you don't remember. I remember watching this video in my math class, which it's weird it was in math class, <laughs> but when I was in school way back when, I don't know why I said way back when, it wasn't that long ago. But when I was in school and I was in math class, I watched a video of a bunch of people who were asked to draw a bike, and then you'd be surprised with how hard it was for them to draw a bike without looking at a bike. <laughs> and similar to copying, it helps with that I to paper it helps you like translate what you see onto paper a lot more like life drawing i guess because it's best to use references from real life that's another reason to use references and also since a reference isn't copying something exactly it's more of just a general reference which is why i've called references it, it allows for a little bit more creative interpretation i guess and it helps for like you can just put your own spin on things which is always fun <laughs> You don't need to feel restricted by it. Like I was talking about in the beginning, I feel like a lot of people who aren't an artist or like within the art community, they tend to look down at using references and they'll say that like you're less of an artist or like you're not as good of an artist if you use references. But then every artist that I've seen talk about using references, all, they always say yes, use references. They're very good. Depending on what kind of artist you are, you have to know about so many different types of things. <laughs> like, as many of you know, I'm currently working on a webcomic. Nothing is out soon, I promise I'll be announcing stuff soon, but just, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but when you're doing stuff like comic work, there's a lot more things you need to know about. Like, of course, you need to know how to draw characters and people. You need to know how to draw environments and perspective. That can include buildings, it can include cars, it can include any sort of, like, weapon or magic stuff, depending on what type of genre it's in. You need to know how to draw phones, if it's, again, depending on what kind of thing it's at. And there's just, you have to learn how to draw, like, nature 
like plants and stuff. There's a lot <laughs> and honestly it's pretty not realistic to be expected to know all of that without using references. If you're trying to do all of that without referencing anything ever, you are going to drive yourself insane. So just, just don't torture yourself, use references. If you can, I would recommend trying and take pictures of yourself or if you have like siblings or a parent or a friend, ask them to take a picture. It's always best to be able to take your own pictures because A, you won't have to worry about giving credit, which I'll talk about how that works with references in a minute. But then if, it, if it's your own picture, you don't have to worry about giving credit because you took it. Or if you need like a fancy angle, you can like get exactly what type of angle you want. There's just a lot of benefits from taking your own pictures. So I, I'd recommend doing that. And then if you can draw from real life, that's even better. One thing that I got recently are those body kun and body chan dolls. Not as hyped as they used to be, but I just remembered they existed and so I bought them because <laughs> I've always wanted them. I don't use them for like general anatomy, but I use them a lot for references with more extreme angles and dynamic poses and foreshortening and all that fun stuff. I'm able to like pose them and see it directly, but not everyone has those and not everyone has the right means to take a good picture, I guess. If you don't take your own pictures, don't worry. You can still find references. A big place that I go is Pinterest. That's, I think, where a lot of artists go. Some artists talk about referencing other artists' work, and personally, I try to avoid that just because, I don't know, I prefer to look at, like, actual images, like, actual photographs, because then that way I can translate it into my own style instead of translating it from one art style to another, but that is an option, but again, that's a, it's a very tricky thing with copying. Just be careful you aren't, like, replicating it. Like, you're just looking looking at it for reference or inspiration or whatever it is. You could also just do the good old Google images. That's another thing that you can do. That one's a little bit trickier though, because I, I find you yeah, just have to get a little more specific to find good results, but it's an option. <laughs> so giving credit when it comes to reference pictures, I think is another thing that a lot of people get caught up on because they're not sure if they should give credit if it's a reference. And I think it all depends on how referenced it is, I guess, if that makes sense. And it's kind of this tricky thing where like, I can't say exactly when you should give credit, but I, like looking at the two drawings that I made in this video. I can definitely say for the second drawing I made, I pretty much just recreated the muscles of this one picture because I just, I really was lost with the back muscles. Like I know a lot less about back muckle, back muckles, <laughs> back, back muscles. I know a lot less about back muscles than I do the front way, the, the abs and stuff. <laughs> and so I needed a more one for one, one, I should... When will I learn how to speak? Someone should teach me. I needed a more one-for-one -one thing for that because it's something I know a lot less about. And so for the second one, I would give credit, which I am. Here's the picture I used. <laughs> but then for the first one, like I said, I didn't use any one specific image. I am a lot more confident with the abs and like front muscles front facing muscles because that's something that I've practiced a lot more on so I don't need a specific like I, ha I have more of an idea of how it looks in my head so I don't feel the need to replicate another picture more closely I guess and so I just kind of loosely looked at some different images and so because of that for the first image there isn't really a need to give credit because I wasn't really mimicking anything. One thing that I do a lot within my sketchbook is I will look at poses or just a picture of someone if I'm like bored or whatever. Like if I'm having a hard time drawing a character because I don't know what pose to draw them in, I'll look on Pinterest and then next to the drawing I'll write pose from Pinterest and then I'll just copy the pose exactly. And then sometimes if I don't know what to draw, I'll just find like a portrait of someone, try, like just replicate it the best I can and then again write that I used a reference. But yeah, it's just the main point of this video, don't be afraid to use references. One thing that I remember a lot about being a younger artist is that like I'll show people my drawings and then they'll really like it and then they'll ask me if I, if it, if the drawing came from my head or if I looked at something and I'll say I looked at something and then immediately they would be a lot less impressed. <laughs> but again, artists tell you to use references. I am an artist and I'm telling you to use references. Just do it. It's very, very good to help you learn. Again, draw what you see, not what you know, because I know nothing to very little. That was backwards. Very little to nothing <laughs> about muscles, and so I referenced them because I wanted to learn how to use them. And then the more you reference something, the less you'll need 
references. So for general body anatomy and proportions, like excluding chiseled muscles and stuff like that, I don't need to use references because that's something that I've already referenced a lot in the past and have practiced for years. And so if I'm just drawing a person standing there, I don't need a reference. But then there are situations like this where I need to reference muscles because I don't know a whole lot about them. And then if I keep practicing drawing muscles and keep referencing how to draw the muscles, I won't need to reference them in the future. But even as you progress as an artist and you still need references, don't let that, don't take that as a defeat because I use references. Many professionals use references. Just use references. Quote of the video, use references. Okay, I don't know if this video made any con con coherent sense. What a funny thing to mess up, how ironic. I don't know if it made a whole lot of sense, but hopefully this helped you. I don't know, I thought it was an interesting topic to talk about, so I thought I would put this here. <laughs> if you have any thoughts about copying, tracing, or using reference photos, please let me know. I would love to hear them. If you think I missed anything in this video, or if anything wasn't clear, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will try my best to answer it. And I think that's about all I have for this video for you guys, so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and if you are new here, hello, my name is Oliver, I make a lot of art. I, uh, uh, I'm assuming you like art, otherwise why would you have watched this video? Please subscribe, that would really mean a lot to me. We are getting super, super, super close to 100,000, which is crazy, so be a bro, subscribe, <laughs> and turn on them notifications, all that other YouTuber stuff. And you can also follow me on social media, which will be on screen now, and linked in the description box below. I would recommend following me on Instagram if you have an Instagram account, because that's where I'm most active. Ask you guys for video suggestions, get you guys involved in videos, etc, etc. And there will also be videos on screen now and linked in the ad card for you to check out if you want. I'd really appreciate it. Again, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.